Hey there, welcome back to Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Today we're talking about bedding in the broiler pen and bedding management. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Melissa and we are in the meat bird production barn and I wanted to put down fresh bedding in the broiler pen this afternoon. So usually we have our YouTube videos loaded up like the end of the week before or over the weekend and when i get up monday morning first thing i can start a video uploading but we didn't have that done this week and we had a busy weekend so then today was monday a work day and it's taken me all day to get to the point where we can film a video so we're actually mid process i've started working on putting the fresh bedding down and we're about mid process but i did that on purpose because I want to show you some of the indicators on the flooring, on the bedding, that are the triggers for us to go ahead and add bedding. So we basically, we basically do use what most chicken keepers would call a deep bedding system. We use uh, the, the pine wood shavings, and so you'll see some packages of that. Um, they're three cubic foot compressed in the bags that we get them in and they're frequently called bales of shavings as well so the bagged pine shavings um the bag itself says when it's exp the contents is expanded at seven cubic foot well so whatever that means i mean it's kind of kind of random and abstract when you say it that way but when i turn the camera around here i'll show you the amount of space that a single bag covered for us. So going to show you that, going to show you the indicators in the bedding that say, hey, we need to add some more to this. In deep litter, you basically just keep adding fresh bedding on top as needed and you let it build up. Now, we have a whole different experience with deep bedding in our egg production pen compared to in the meat production pen. So um, the, the main difference is in the meat production pen, the birds really mash the bedding down and they max out the absorbency of the bedding. We don't experience either of those things in the egg production pen. In the egg production pen, the chickens tend to scratch and dig a lot more in the bedding. And so they constantly keep the bedding fluffed up and they constantly keep it more or less aerated aerated so that we're not getting like it's not packing down and it's not forming a crust on top and it's not sealing off what's underneath it that doesn't happen in the egg production pen in the meat production pen and i'm gonna i left some spots where you can see that they max out the absorbency so it's it's taking on all the moisture that it can they're also walking on it and not digging in it very much some but not very much not scratching in it a lot because meat birds are more feeders than foragers they prefer to have their food put in a feeder than to walk around and scratch and forage it's it's not because they're kept indoors it's because that's the nature of the beast so um they're not scratching and picking at the bedding and, and aerating it nearly as much as the egg layers so that's why we see it gets so packed down and with it getting packed down and maxing out the absorbency we actually see the top will kind of form a crust and it'll kind of seal what's underneath it off. So that actually works for you and against you in a couple of ways. The way it helps you when you're raising broilers is that it seals off any pathogens or like uh, mold spores, fungal spores that are trapped in that bedding. It kind of seals that off and keep it, keeps it below where your birds are. Um, it works against you though in that once that seals off and that bedding has absorbed as much moisture as it's going to, it, that it's not going to do any good. It becomes clumpy. It can start to become a little slick on top. You do not want broilers on a slick footing. You don't want broilers on something that's so holding so much moisture where their skin is exposed and touching it um, that, you know, it can cause blisters and sores on them. So when we're seeing the bedding have such a manure load that it's approaching that where it's, it's maxed out absorbency and it's it's um, forming a crust and sealing off. We need to get fresh bedding on top of it for those broilers. So, um, like I said, deep litter management and egg production, they're gonna keep it 
fluffed up, aerated, kicked up a little more than meat birds do, meat birds are going to pack it down. So we add a lot more bedding in our meat bird pens than we hard, We haven't put bedding in the egg production pens for four or five months. In the meat bird production pen, we're probably putting bedding in once a week. So there's a difference. There's just a difference. But you just need to add it when they need it. What we have done also is we've had birds on on this floor since probably about since sometime in January and it's been in pretty constant use so we've just been letting it add up we have used an actual garden tiller walk behind tiller in this building a um, couple times and tilled up the top layers of the bedding to aerate it to fluff it up so we could get a little more use out of it but that's, that's about all we could do um, other than putting more bedding down. So then the birds that are on it now will leave the end of June and we will take all of this bedding out. And what we want to accomplish at that point is we want to rest the floor. So we'll clean everything out that we can get to. We'll have to work around the broody hen that's in here now. But um, we'll, we'll take everything out and, and we won't have birds on this again for like another to well another month and a half I should say it won't be quite two months but that that's long enough we can let the floor rest so you know we'd like to get about 28 days between birds between flocks and having nothing on the floor getting the bedding totally out to let the floor rest so let's look at some differences so um, here we can see birds on brand new bedding they love it I told you we did one bale of bedding i'm trying to get back here where you can get a sense of what it covered where you can see the fresh bedding i would estimate is about 10 foot by 15 foot okay so a a bag or bale of shavings it says it's three cubic feet compressed in that bag and then seven cubic feet expanded that's about what it covers 10 foot by 15 foot and that's I mean, that's probably not even, that's no more than an inch layer. You can see they do start picking through it when we put it down, and it's it's just what they do. So, But it's very comfortable for them. Um, so showing you the difference then, what was the bedding like before? So here, of course, it's you can see a big difference. Um, the bedding over here has been used. It's, it's darkened, we've maxed out the absorbency. I know you can't get everything from the visual effect there, but you can definitely tell this bedding that's darker has been used. Now I wanna show you here though, I think you might be able to see this difference. Like this, okay, so where this imprint is, right here, that's where those risers, those wood pieces under that water tray, they were sitting right here, okay? They were sitting right here. So you can see even, you know, there's like a finger depth there where we've built bedding up around that, okay? And so where that wood was, we weren't getting any new moisture absorption because the wood was there, so the birds weren't on that. The birds' heavy traffic pattern is around the feeders and water. So this around that is like, it's really packed down. And while we have birds on it, we really don't want to disturb it. So over here, you know, there's not new bedding here, but you can tell it's a lot lighter color than right there because this still, it could still absorb a little bit. There's still some fresh bedding there, but they have absolutely maxed out the absorbency right around the waters that sat here. So a waterer sat here and you can still kind of tell a water actually sat right here is is the corner where that where that riser was sitting okay so so then going on around the pen I can show you that in a couple other places too like so right here we actually have we have two wood risers here one and two and we've bedded enough recently that we've covered this bottom riser. So I'll do the same thing with all these waters and feeders. I actually picked up the risers like from the spot and moved it over there after I put fresh bedding down. And I'm going to do that in the whole pen. So that was one bag. We're going to put down at least one, two, three more. And I bought two more besides that 
if I need them, I'll put them in here. So it could take all six, really. Um, so same thing here, you know, there's risers there. I'll put bedding down, I'll shift those risers a little bit and redo that. You can see, here's a good example too, high traffic around waters. And, and when they get up and move around, they relieve themselves too. So any place that they stop and hang out, like waters, feeders, you're going to get, you're going to get some, um, more packing there on the bedding. So look at that nice, nice shot of some birds. These birds are four weeks old. They go to the processor in two weeks and they're looking good. It was interesting in our last birds that went to the processor, um, the, the poultry that we got back, those birds were lighter in the chicken breast meat, but heavier in the drumstick and thigh meat. So that was very interesting. So uh, I'll have to another time research and share what I learn about. There's actually three predominant strains of Cornish rock cross meat birds, and they, they finish out and fill out slightly differently from each other. So, hey, thank you for joining us at Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. Shoot us any more questions or observations about bedding that you have. We're, we are looking for an alternative, but for now we're sticking with pine shavings. We have considered sand and we've considered chopped straw. So we may try out something different in the future. And uh, we will clean all of this bedding out the end of June when all of these birds leave. Please subscribe to our channel. Please give us any ideas for any topics you'd like us to try to cover. And please join us again back in the barn. Thanks so much.